Hello, I'm Joe Forrester. You're watching Southwest London TV. Now, after we visited Wimbledon Studios last month, we're lucky enough to be here at Twickenham Film Studios, where we're in the Richard Attenborough Theatre, which is where they do the sound mixing on movies. It's one of the biggest dubbing theatres in the country. And we're also lucky enough to be joined by British film director Stuart Urban. Things are going bandy, right? And we need some kind of saviour. Jesus or Batman or someone like that. Someone like that or someone we have a new movie that uh, came out this year. It's called May I Kill You. Can you tell us a little bit about the movie um, and what you're trying to do with it? May I Kill You is a pretty kind of really offbeat film. It, I, I, one of the reasons I moved out of television was I wanted to do films, feature films that could dare to do things that you just don't really see on television. Mm. And this is about a psychotic uh, m s cop. It's about a psychotic situation that develops in the London riots where a, a, a very put-upon policeman, cycling Bobby, has just had enough. Um, I understand lots of it was shot on location in south-west London. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the places? Yeah, it was. I, I live uh, um, in south-west London and uh, we had um, a variety of scenes that were done around. You know, for example, we had uh, if I turn around, this one was done in Wimbledon. Oh, wow. uh, actually, yeah, near, near Merton. And we filmed at Wimbledon Studios, where we did the riots, and we did the police station, where I directed the bill. We shot on the streets, a lot of cycling scenes around southwest London. I'd say about half the film was shot in southwest London, probably. And those riot scenes that you mentioned, how difficult is something like that to shoot and to orchestrate? You have your key stunt performers, who are like the hero ones, who will go nearest to the rushing police car or motorbike or get knocked on the head by a dustbin or whatever. <laughs> you also got to watch out for the camera crew, like rushing through handheld. You could get knocked over or fall over. So, so the thing is, plan all the moves, you walk them through slowly, uh, make sure people don't get carried away. Because within the extras, uh, some are not stunt performers and they have to be safe, you know, not near, too near the fires or we had flame, we had a car roaring fire from a car that was so um, so hot that it melted uh, the tarmac and pavement and burnt the pavement in Derby. So we, we got fined by Wimbledon Studios for that. Yeah, um, they, they, were, they were upset. <laughs> but, uh, you know, when you have a riot, anything can go wrong. You mentioned Twitter as well. The film does uh, embrace lots of aspects of modern social media, YouTube, Twitter. Um, was it important to you to make a film like that? The interaction of, of murderers and social media is beginning. Since I wrote the script, three killers actually used the methods seen in the film. One used a GoPro camera, a little, you know, tiny camera on his chest, Mohamed Mera in Toulouse in France, uh, Anders Breivik in Norway, and uh, the third one was a guy called Rocco Magnotta uh, broadcasting to his fans. All that happened since I wrote the script, so I'm sad to say, but, you know, I'm sad to say I told you so, mm. uh, but you know, so by making a black comedy, I get people, I hope, to think about what some of these realities are. We're really excited as well about the, the reissue of Preaching to the Perverted. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, the film's just been revived, the first film in Europe to be revived by its fans on a crowdfunding site, Kickstarter, and so they're paying for it to be restored in a glorious HD and totally new 5.1 sound, and there's a premiere on, uh, uh, of the film, the restored version, on the 20th of July at BAFTA. Fantastic. That must be so rewarding for you as well when a, a movie you've made is revived, not, not by you, not by financiers, but by the fans. That must be incredible. It's great, and especially because, you know, normally it's only the Hollywood studios that have the money to restore a film. And uh, here the fans wanted to pay up and see it again. But thank you so much for joining us today. Don't forget, if you want to get your hands on Stuart's new film, May I Kill You, it's available on DVD and also available to download right now. And we're looking forward to catching up with Stuart again for the reissue of his cult classic movie, Preaching to the Perverted. I'm Joe Forrester, you've been watching Southwest London TV.